Hey there, peddlers. My name is Fleb, and today I'm going to be solving a Slitherlink puzzle by Grant Fikes. This puzzle was originally published on GrandmasterPuzzles.com, and I've put a link to the puzzle in the description. One thing to note before we start is that these letters on the side off to the left don't actually mean anything for the solve. They're just a way to enter an answer online or with an answer checker. Now, Slitherlink is a path type puzzle, so what we're going to be doing is drawing a path around the grid subject to a few conditions. The first is that we can only draw paths horizontally or vertically between one dot to another dot. We can't do something like draw a path like this diagonally. That's not allowed. We need to make one single closed loop. But we need to also make the path have one other condition. If you see the squares with numbers in them, each of those squares has that number of segments around it exactly. So the zero square here has zero segments around it. And to notate that, I'm just going to put X's there. That means that there are no segments there. The same is true of this zero over here. But something like this three needs to have three line segments around it. Solving puzzles like these often involves looking at different clue combinations. For example, let's start with this three and this zero up here in the upper right. We already marked the zero as having no segments around it, and we know this three has to have three segments. There are three spaces left, so that three fills in like this. Now that loop has to keep going. You can't have a single end of a loop like this. And you can't have it go right or up, because there are no line segments there. So it has to go down there, and it has to go up here. Now it can't go to the right, because it wouldn't be able to complete a closed loop. So it has to come out here to the left. There's nowhere to go if it goes down, so it goes left one more square. You can see the same sort of thing here in the lower left. We have a zero clue here, and we have a three clue right next to it. But we need to have three line segments around this square. There's one place where it can't go, so the remaining ones have to be there. Then the loop has to come out. Now let's look at something just a little bit trickier, like this zero and this two here. The zero has no line segments around it. But can the two have a line segment here, on the bottom? No, because that line segment wouldn't be able to escape. It can't go up, and it can't go left. Therefore, this two doesn't have a line segment there. Instead, it's filled in the only two spots that are remaining. Let's look at this combination here in the corner. Can we have a line come down here on this one? No, we can't do that either, because if this comes down, in order to make a fully closed loop, it would have to come off to the left. And then you would have two line segments around a one clue. So there can't be a line there, and there also can't be a line here. But notice that now that we can't have a line here, the same thing is true of this one clue. If a line were to come down, it would have to go to the left, and then that clue would have two line segments around it, even though it just wants one so we can fill in those X's. This segment has to go up, which fills that clue. And now this segment only has one line remaining on it. This can't go left, it would form a second loop, so it has to go up, which fills that. So it has to keep going up until it's finally there. And now this has to go to the left. Now that we've spent some time down here in the lower right, let's take a look at some other clusters of clues, like these threes here. Threes are interesting, and in that one way to think about them is that it's not just that you're putting three lines in, but there's only one space where there's not a line. What if that space were in one of these two places, on the upper left of this three clue? Well then these two lines would have to be filled in. If that were the case, there'd be no line segment here or here, and so this three clue could not be filled. Therefore, the line segment which is not filled in is not one of these upper lefts, but one of these bottom rights. So we can fill in these two lines here, and these two lines here. Now there's not a line segment here, and so this three is all the way filled in. There's not a line segment here, and this three gets filled in. If this three would refill itself, 
by going down. We wouldn't be able to fill this 3 clue on the bottom, because there wouldn't be a line segment on this left or right portion. And therefore it goes off to the right. There's not a line segment there, and that 3 is fully filled. Let's just fill in a few more X's. There's nothing around that zero clue. And now what if a line segment were to come down here? Well again, that's not possible because it can't leave that area. So whenever you see three X's like this in a pattern, you can always fill in that fourth X. This two is now filled. This one clue is now done. But before we do anything more with this end of the loop, I want to focus a little bit more on this lower left here. This one has two possibilities, either it can go up or go to the right. What if it went to the right? Then it would come over here, and come down, and connect on the bottom. It couldn't go right there because it's filled that one clue. That's impossible, as that would create a second loop, so it has to go up. That also means this one clue is filled on the bottom here. If it was filled on the left, it would have to go up and it'd be stuck in that region. And that comes out, just like this. Well, now we need to connect this end of the loop up too, now that we've closed off some places where it could connect. Can't go up. It has to go to the right. Up. Right. Can't go to the right. We have that 3x pattern again. And so it has to go up. We have two ends of the loop that are really close together over here. It's possible there's some logic there as well. The zero has no line segments. We can't have a line going into the zero because there's no place it could go. So this one has two possibilities. If it were to go this way, it would connect up to that end of the loop. It wouldn't be able to go up because we filled the one clue, and then it would create a second loop. As a result, that one is to be filled like this. That also tells us this loop segment comes out. Now we can't connect these two, it would form a second loop. So this comes over and up, fills that. Can't connect there, it would form a second loop once again. So that comes up, that comes up, and these don't connect there. We still have a corner we haven't examined here in the upper left. We have that corner rule for ones we've seen before, where you can't have a line segment going into a corner, because it has to come out of that corner as well, and it provides two loop segments. So that's blocked off. It also can't go here, on the bottom, because if it did, it would have to go down, and there's nowhere for it to go. One other way to see that is that you have two X's here, so you can't have a line segment there. And now you have two X's there, and can't have a line segment there. So that one clue is filled here. That goes off to the right. This two is now filled. And it comes down, and connects to one part of the loop. If this one clue were to go down here, it would have to go down once more, and create a second loop. So instead it goes off to the right. That fills the one clue. This has to keep going. Fills that clue. And then it connects up to be part of that loop. We've ignored this end of the loop here. Let's take it out to the left and then up where it has to go. It can't go to the right because of that one corner rule we've discussed before. It can't go to the left because of that 3x rule that we've talked about before. So it has to go up and it fills that clue. Now we have a one corner rule here again, where if the line segment goes here, it has to go off to the left, and then we have too many lines around that one clue, which tells us how that clue is filled. This line can't go up, must go left, can't go up or down, must go left. Now we have just this area to clean up. We know we can't have line segments here or here. Now we have a one and a quarter rule again, which leaves one segment left on this one clue. 
This segment can't go left or up, it has to go right. They can't connect there, or they form a second loop. That fills the two, fills the one, and solves the puzzle. And there you have it. Slither links are interesting because they're path puzzles. And as a result, you can use a lot of logic with figuring out whether you're going to accidentally form two loops or two paths. They also have a lot of clue combinations, things that you'll see over and over again that are used to help set up where the path goes, like a three next to a zero, or one in a corner, or three X's that you can use to place a fourth X where a line can't go. I recommend trying out the type. I've had a lot of fun with it over the years. I hope that you learned something about Slitherlink puzzles, and next time, you'll give some of these techniques a try. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Twitter, at FlebPuzzles. Thank you again, everyone, and as always, happy puzzling.